What's up everyone, Natter here. In this video, we're gonna go over a bunch of exercises together to get more practice with the different node types in the DOM in JavaScript together. In the previous video, we went over these different node types, things like the element type, the comment type, text type, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, in this one, we're gonna go over a bunch of examples that I've put together, just like I've done in the previous series, uh, where I have a warm up and three different exercises, and I'll get you a chance to pause the video and try them out yourself, and then we'll go through uh, solutions together and a little bit of a walkthrough just to get more practice with this idea of the different node types in the DOM together. Let's get right to the exercises. All right, so to start, uh, as I mentioned, I have a warm up as well as three different exercises. So the way that these work is I kind of have a bunch of comments set up. Um, I'm gonna read through them, give a little bit of preamble, uh, and maybe a short demo, and then I'll give you a chance to pause the video, try out the exercise, and then you can kind of unpause it uh, and check out your solution and compare it to mine. Um, so for this warm up exercise, um, what we wanna do is we wanna create an HTML file that contains at least one of each of the following note types. Okay, so uh, we want a document type, which is a doc type declaration. Uh, we want an element type, a comment type, and a text type. All right, so if these seem a bit confusing, and definitely check out the previous video, we kind of go through all these types in that one. Uh, then what I want you to do is open up this HTML file that you end up creating uh, in your browser uh, and open it up in the dev tools and inspect each of the nodes using uh, both the elements tab and the actual console to log out the node type of each of those nodes that you have selected. So uh, just to actually uh, kind of specify what that means, we haven't looked at query selector and get element by ID and all that kind of stuff yet. So feel free to use those if you know those, you wanna try them out. That's gonna be the subject of the next video actually. Uh, but really what you can do is this nice shortcut, which is actually pretty good uh, to kind of have handy at the back of your mind where you can use the dollar sign zero uh, in Chrome and things like Firefox. Uh, I haven't checked the other browsers, but I'm sure it's something similar uh, where you can actually refer to the element that you have selected in the elements tab in the actual console as if you had kind of query selected it. All right, so uh, give that a shot and then we'll go through this warm up together. Okay, so uh, to start, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new file here. I'll just call this uh, warmup.html just so that um, I know what that one's for. Uh, so the first thing we want is a doc type. So I'm gonna do uh, kind of a doc type HTML declaration there, a little bit of autocomplete, a little bit of cheating, I guess, but um, hopefully that one uh, you, you kind of get used to actually putting in there. We, we generally don't have to have this, uh, but as I mentioned in the previous video, if we don't have this, the browser actually uh, kind of interprets our HTML in a slightly different mode called the quirks mode. <laughs> um, it, really, it really is a thing, you can look it up. Um, and generally, since we are writing HTML, we really want it to actually follow the strict HTML rules, just in case there are some weird edge cases that might mess up our formatting. Um, so after this, uh, we definitely want some HTML. And then uh, we can have a head in there. Uh, maybe, you know, for fun in here, I'll just put a, a title uh, and I'll just put a warm up just so that we kind of have that uh, show up in our tab. Um, and then just to kind of uh, take a look at what we want in here. So we have the doc type, I'm pretty sure that's done. You want an element. Now, technically, this these these are all elements, um, but uh, you know, I'll probably show that to you. And I'll put a body in here as well. That's also technically an element. Um, but let's actually put like a, a proper element in here just so that we can actually see that a little bit better. Uh, so I'm gonna say um, like, hello world, right? Uh, and that's gonna be uh, my little element there. You know, why not? I'll just put like a little little rock in there. Why not? Um, so that that is like an H1 heading element that we're actually gonna see an HTML heading element, which is a type of element. Um, so once we have that, uh, let's see if we can add a comment and some text. Uh, so I, maybe I'll just add this right above here for fun. Uh, a comment is kind of formatted like this, uh, just like that. So um, a angle bracket and then a bang or an exclamation and then two dashes. Uh, and then I'll say, um, how are you doing, right? And uh, that can be a comment there. If anyone wants to look through our console uh, or the elements tab in the DOM, uh, they can see this little message that we've left them. <clears throat> and then we can have a text node as well. So a text node is just something, uh, as we saw in the previous video that it's kind of just floating, right? It's not part of a node that expects text like an H1 or a paragraph or something. So the body is one of one such node that we, if we just dump stuff in here, um, like this is some text like that, uh, this will actually be a text node because it's not wrapped in a tag of any kind that is actually semantic for, uh, for text like an H1, okay? So that should be pretty much it. So the, the next step is really 
to open up this uh, file uh, in our browser and then check out the dev tools and kind of make sure all these node types are correct um, and they are kind of what we expect them to be. So I'm just going to open this in my finder here. Um, a little bit, a little bit small there, but let me zoom in a tiny bit if that helps. Now I'll double click this warm up file. It's going to open up in my browser. I'll super, super zoom in here just so that we can really see. I can do an inspect, pull out my dev tools. Uh, I'll zoom in on this one as well, just so it's nice and large. Um, and uh, here we have our head, here we have our body, and then all these different nodes. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have our doc type. So I'm going to select this one, and you can see that we have the dollar sign zero is what it's showing us for uh, access to this in the actual console. So if I go over to the console and I do dollar sign zero, what we'll see is I have that doc type. Okay. Um, and if I do dot node type, we'll see that it's a node type of 10. All right, so that's pretty good. So really to show that this is the correct node type, um, we can do node type um, is equal to node dot doc type, I think document type node, that's the one. Um, so they're all numbered and it's a little bit confusing to remember which is which. Um, generally the node uh, object or class has all these constants um, built into it that we can actually take a look to confirm it is what we think it is, or we can just look up on MDN uh, and Chrome, um, or sorry, uh, MDN or the uh, spec that you see uh, what these different node types are. Now we're not going to be using these node types all the time. It's just important to actually know um, about them because most of the time we're going to be working with um, the elements node, as you can probably expect. Uh, but there are definitely times where we're going to actually get node types that are different. So just to show you what I mean, um, if I we'll see this later on actually, and if I do dollar uh, console dot dir of this, uh, just so I can get a listing of this object. So let me just uh, clear my console there. Um, we'll get an actual uh, expandable object representation of this DOM node. Okay, and if I open that up, uh, I know a lot of this is cut off by my wonderful face here, uh, but you can see that this is really just a JavaScript object with a bunch of different properties. Okay, now the different uh, types of nodes uh, are th there. There's like different types of things that can be on them. Okay, so we'll, we'll see we'll see this, and it, it should intuitively uh, kind of make sense, right? Like if we're looking at a doc type, it's going to have slightly different things on it than maybe like an input element or a paragraph element, right? Um, so we'll, we'll definitely take a look here, but some interesting stuff in here, right? So node type is is one of those things. That's the one that we actually uh, logged out right here, which is the number ten. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at these other ones. So uh, I'm going to come back to my elements tab here. Uh, I'm going to select HTML just to show you that this is also an actual uh, element type. So if I do um, dollar sign zero dot node type, we'll see this type of one, um, and that is actually equal to node uh, dot uh, element node. That's the one, um, and this is actually an element node uh, as we'd expect. And uh, HTML elements are actually a subset of this element, which is a little bit more generic um, for. Uh, other things like XML and stuff like that. So um, in this case, uh, we actually have our element node, but but you're probably thinking like, oh, like this, this, this it feels kind of weird to say that the HTML um, is an element node. So really, like we we put this H1 in here, and that's really our element node, right? So if I do a dollar sign zero dot node type, that's also going to be type one, uh, which is also going to show us that it's an um, element node as well. Right. So the uh, all, all these different things that are not the dot type, generally speaking, are all going to be uh, element nodes if they're kind of like HTML tags. OK, so that's pretty good for that one. Let's take a look at some of the other ones in here. So we have uh, our comment, right? So let's let's see, see what that one's like. So if we do a dollar sign zero dot node type, this is node type of eight, right? And that is equal to a node dot comment node. Um, and same thing for the text, right? So if I highlight the text over here, which is a little bit awkward to select with the selector because it's not really an actual um, HTML element. Uh, if I go back to the console and I do the same thing here, uh, dollar sign zero dot node type, that's a node type of three. Um, so if I do, is, is this equal to a comment node? No, it's not. Is it equal to a text node? Uh, absolutely, yes it is. All right, and, and really just to kind of show you uh, something cool here, if I do uh, console, dot dir of our elements just so we compare it to what we saw before um, what we might expect is a little bit uh, of a difference in here right you can see we're starting to see a little bit of different stuff than we saw with our doc type um, and and that's that's kind of interesting right uh, just as you kind of would expect and similarly an html or a comment uh, element would, would also differ slightly 
Okay, now um, I just want to mention like this seems slightly pedantic, and I and I appreciate that. Um, believe me, I really do appreciate that. But I think that knowing these node types uh, is extremely important because what we can actually do, and I'm and I'm so passionate about this. I know I'm repeating it a bunch of times throughout the different videos. We can actually build up our own entire dom from scratch and we can put in text we can put in comments right we can even create the doc type we can create a document we can do all sorts of stuff from scratch without writing any html which is totally amazing we're going to get better at this as we go along but in order to really understand conceptually how these things work and really the fact that these are just translations into javascript objects in this case when we're working um, through the browser uh, it, it's quite fascinating, right? The, the the power that this has and the ability that to just think of this both in the context of JavaScript, but also just that we can actually code everything just directly through JavaScript, um, which is quite remarkable, including CSS, which we'll see later. Okay, so uh, let's head back to our exercises. So that, that's the warm up right there. So I, th I think we're good for that. Now we kind of, uh, we, we covered everything in here. Uh, let's take a look at exercise one together. Okay, so this one's fun. I, I had a lot of fun kind of thinking of this one and the next one as well, which is a little bit uh, similar to this. Um, I want you to open up Amazon.com. Okay, uh, if you haven't used it before, it's like an e-commerce store, uh, ships stuff all over the world, and you can buy clothing and books and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, they have a lot of web pages. Just go to the home page to start. And uh, once you have that open, uh, open up your dev tools like we just did with our warm up exercise. Um, and I want you to do a couple things in the dev tools just like we did with our HTML that we coded ourselves. So I want you to find each of these following node ty uh, types in the elements tab and then log it out to the console just like we saw with a, a kind of the dollar sign zero. Okay, I want you to find the doc type in, on amazon.com. Um, and, and I want you to log out the, that node and its node type. Then I want you to find any element on the page, just any element, and make sure that it is an element by checking the node type in the console again. Same thing for comment and same thing for text. All right. It's a little bit of a wild goose chase here while you uh, kind of go through it. The purpose of this is just to get more practice with the node type on a, a third party web page that you didn't code yourself because they're a little bit messier, a lot more stuff going on, but also just have fun hunting around in the elements tab and the console tab and flipping back between the two to get more practice with that process. All right, um, so give that a shot and then we will go through it together. Okay, so for this one, you're not gonna code anything in HTML, we're actually just gonna pull up amazon.com directly. So I'm just gonna pull that up. And I have it open over here, so I'm just gonna switch over to that tab, a little bit zoomed in. Um, so to start, I know that I want a doc type, right? So that should technically be the first thing in the actual element tree or the DOM tree, right? So if I right click here and I do inspect uh, anywhere really on the page, I should get my elements tab, right? So it's gonna kind of zoom me into the section that I inspected. Um, I'm gonna scroll to the very, very top and there it is, right? There is our doc type declaration that this is indeed an HTML page. So if uh, if I go to my console tab and uh, I clear this out to lots of uh, logs in there, um, what I wanna do is uh, check out my dollar sign zero and look at it, that's the doc type right there. And if I do dollar sign zero dot node type, that's 10 and uh, dollar sign zero dot node name. Uh, and we get HTML, which is a little bit awkward in this case uh, because uh, this is a doc type, uh, but this is just kind of, um, I, I think it's actually part of the spec. I'm not entirely sure as to why they, they called it um, HTML as opposed to a different node, node name. But um, if you'd like to look that up, I encourage you to do so. Um, but Generally, the, the node name, uh, which we'll see in, in the, the future elements um, as we kind of go through this exercise even, uh, is going to be a bit more informative than this one. This is quite a unique node name, actually. Um, so yeah, that's the, um, that's the doc type. So now let's take a look at the next one. So we want to actually grab any element. So let me actually just grab HTML, which is the entire web page element. So you can click on that one, go back in here, I'm gonna do the same things. The dollar sign zero. Oh my gosh, that's gonna log everything out for me. <laughs> Don't want that one. Uh, if I look at the node name for HTML, you'll notice that it's all caps, um, and this is true for every HTML element. Okay, uh, the node name is always in all caps, which is kind of interesting. Um, so I guess that's one of the differentiating factors between this and the doc type is that one's in lowercase, so you can also tell the difference there uh, apart from just the node type. But if I do dollar sign zero dot node type, I always type note, uh, we get one, which we know and we saw is the node um, element, elements type, right? Um, perfect. So 
that's that one. Uh, let's, do, let's take a look at another one because that's kind of boring to just uh, cheat with the HTML there. A script, right? That's kind of interesting. That, that's actually, I, I think, one of my Chrome extensions. Uh, but like, let's just see what happens if I uh, try to grab this script um, and take a look at it in the console tab. So if I do dollar sign zero, now it's a it's a script tag, which is which is kind of cool. And if I do dollar sign zero dot node type, uh, we can see that it's an element type, right? And the node name is a script, right? So it's still an element tag, uh, but the node name is script. So that that that's that's pretty interesting, right? So scripts are also just HTML elements, which we can actually use to our advantage later, right? Super super exciting to actually see what we can do with that there. Um, okay, let's switch back. Let's just take a look at another one in here somewhere. We have our body. Let's open that up. We have more scripts and stuff. That's a lot of a lot of scripty stuff going on, I guess. Uh, let's take a look at you know one of these navs at the top, an A tag. Um, let's let's pull that up and see what we get there. So I'm gonna do dollar sign zero uh, here. Um, it's trying to make some <laughs> requests out, I guess, for marketing or whatever, uh, getting blocked probably by my extensions. Um, node name. This is an A tag. Uh, dollar sign zero dot node type, and that is also an element type, right? So all these seem to be HTML element types, except for the dot type that we've seen so far. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's let's head back here. So we want to see if we can find a comment type and a text type on this page. So for the comment, I think I saw one earlier. Here's one right here, right? Um, SP and feature something 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 uh, some other stuff. Pilu Navian. Um, not really sure what these are. Let's just pick one of these random ones. These definitely look like comments to me. Uh, so if I clear my console out and I do dollar sign zero, uh, there's our comment pilu, uh, and I dollar sign zero dot node uh, type, and that's eight. Um, and then we do node name, and that's a, a comment, right? Um, and you can see that uh, the the way that the name works for this is slightly different than the actual element types, which is kind of cool as well. Okay, so uh, that is a comment type. Let's see if we can find a text type. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do for the text type, just for fun to switch it up a bit, I'm going to scroll through this page and try to like inspect different elements to see if they're text elements or if they're paragraphs or headings. So I'm going to grab this uh, little um, tool right here, and I'm going to click on different things here. This is an H2. OK, so that's not really what I want. But maybe the see more, that probably is a link. Yep, that's a link. Uh, let's scroll down further. Maybe, maybe these are probably H2s as well. Fitness, fantastic. Uh, we got some apparel um, and top sellers, fantastic. Uh, how about some of this stuff? Maybe maybe this one here. Let's take a look at this. This is a div. Okay, okay. Uh, new customer. How about that one? No, that's also a div. All right. Um, maybe something down over here. These are more footers. If I you know sc maybe look at one of these. These are all ULs. Maybe uh, divs. It's kind of tricky to, to find this here. It's like a, a wild goose chase. I made this tricky for us. Um, where Where is a, a text node that I can find in here? I, I swear there was a couple in here. These are all spans. Um, and that's technically not a text node. So just to, to show you that the span is not a text node, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight the span just to kind of show us something here. I'm going to dollar sign zero. So that's our span. Uh, and I say dollar sign zero dot node type. And that's still an element type. Right, uh, and if I do dollar sign zero dot node name, that is a span. Okay, so it's it's different from an actual uh, text because text is just something that's not meant to be part of an HTML um, text element. I'm gonna look at this one down here. Maybe this one's it. It's also part of a span. Wow, they they have a lot of. Uh, oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> that's that's pretty amazing. I don't actually know if um, that is. <laughs> Part of the Amazon page, or just like one of my extensions, is actually just kind of messing uh, messing up the HTML and putting that in there. But that's pretty cute. Um, whoever did this over at Amazon, good job, good for you. Um, you know, shipping extra bytes down to everyone's web page when they visit uh, Amazon.com, um, just so that we can see a cute uh, a cute cat if we happen to open up the console. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna scroll through this now because I was struggling to find one for. Uh, the text type, let's just keep our eyes open here. Uh, this one maybe, this one is kind of in an A tag. So, so I guess the question is if I click on something inside of an A tag like this, because this is definitely part of the A tag, let's see what happens if I, if I take a look at that, right? Just for exploration purposes. Uh, so if I do uh, dollar sign zero here, uh, I have my 
Oh, that's a text. Okay, so dollar sign zero dot node type. So there we go. So that's actually a text type. Um, so just to confirm, that's equal to node dot text node right there, right? So um, the text inside this node is actually uh, a text node, but the actual element surrounding it is going to be um, an anchor tag, right? So um, let, let, let's confirm that really quick together. So if I if, if I have this, for example, right here, uh, this anchor tag selected, um, which is if I click the A and I go back here and I do dollar sign uh, zero, what I'll see is that this is the A tag and do dollar sign zero dot node type and that's an element type, right? Node type of one. But we saw that when we select the text inside of it, it's actually a different node type. And this is generally true for things like attributes as well, which you'll see later. Um, but you can see that when we have a span, um, we didn't have that ability, right? And the reason is that we can do a lot of things inside of an A tag, right? So technically the way we can think of an A tag is that it has like nodes inside of it, right? So for example, this A tag, if we really think about it, actually has a text node Right, sell on Amazon, uh, a break, a BR tag, which is um, a regular element uh, type, a break tag, and then a span, right? So this is also another element tag. So it has uh, kind of these different node types nested inside of it, which is kind of cool. And that's pretty common uh, for some of the different node types as well. So um, uh, yeah, like I, I guess for for a div in this case, since, um, since this text um, is part of the div, uh, technically a div can have text in it. So for example, if I go back to this here and I do a dollar sign zero, if I have this selected correctly, um, we can see that this is a div with text in it. But if I look at the node type here, um, we can see that this is actually, uh, the, the div itself is a node type of one because this in here really is the only element um, in this case for this div. So um, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious here. So if I switch back here, and, and, I, and I try to, uh, you can actually edit the HTML and I just wanna see if this actually works. I'm, I'm doing this on the fly here because I actually didn't really prepare this. I just wanted to see if I can kind of make a point. I'm gonna right click and edit as HTML. Um, you don't have to do this. You can just kind of watch here. Um, and I add, for example, in here, uh, a BR. Um, I think I can just do BR and then I just do hello. Uh, and then I do another maybe BR, right? And then I press uh, enter, I guess, or I just click outside. Uh, so you can see that if I, where is, where is that div? Where did it go? Did I lose it already? Oh no. Um, there it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, select it right here. Um, <clears throat> so um, you can see that I've added a bunch of stuff now inside of this div, right? And now I can uh, select these different things just like the anchor tag, right? And now these are different nodes. So if I select this Amazon payment products now that's nested inside this div as a child, which we'll see later when we get to navigating the DOM instead of the only thing in that element. And now I do dollar sign zero. What we'll see is that this is a text node, right? Dollar sign zero dot uh, node type is a text node. But if I actually go back to my elements and I select, for example, this BR tag, like we had with the anchor tag earlier, and I come back to my console, what we're gonna have is dollar sign zero. This is our BR tag. And if I look at the node type, as you'd expect, this is an element type, right? So there's a lot of kind of nuances when it comes to the DOM and like, what are the different types of nodes? What is a what is a different node type? What's a text node, comment node? What, what kind of dictates what switches from one to the other? Now, you don't need to know those nuances. The most important thing is just to realize that there are these different node types, right? And if we have stuff floating around like this, generally it's going to be um, a text node, right? It, we can have element nodes. Um, and when we get to the concept of things like children and child nodes, it's gonna make a lot more sense because child nodes don't all have to be HTML elements, right? Technically, they can be any node type, including a comment, which is gonna come really handy because this is something that's usually an oversight and can actually cause bugs in your code if you're not careful. Okay, so uh, let's uh, leave it at that teaser for this one. Hopefully that was an interesting exercise for you. Um, I know it was kind of a wild goose chase to find these last couple there, so I hope you had fun trying to find that in there. Uh, and we saw a little bit about the node name as well. Let's take a look at exercise two together. So. For this exercise, I kind of want to stick with Amazon again, just so that you can get a bit more practice. We're not jumping around too much now that you've been poking around in there. Um, I'd like you now to actually focus your attention on the actual objects that are being given to us through the DOM API. So when we actually look at one of these objects, um, I'd like you to pull up an element 
um, or even things that are not elements, so like the text node and the doc type node, for example, um, and actually console.dir out that element or that node, I should say, right? And I want you to explore the different properties on that object that we're getting back from the DOM API and try to like think in your mind, like, does this make sense? Like, why would the DOM API be giving us these different properties on these objects? Like, what can we do with these things? Is it useful to us? Are some of these totally pointless? If we were to actually uh, have access to this in our JavaScript code, uh, what could we do with it? Like, what, what are the possibilities? Um, what might be missing? Can you think of anything that you wish was in there? Right? I know that's kind of very uh, abstract kind of questions, um, but I really would like you to poke around and get more practice looking through the dev tools because we're going to be spending a lot of time in there when we're working with the DOM. And uh, frankly, this practice is going to carry you really, really far when you start working in web development in general, because this is something that you're going to need to do when you're debugging a lot anyways. So uh, have fun, poke around in, in the actual Amazon website some more, but this time actually focus on the actual objects that come back using console DIR and poke through the different nested objects to see what's in there. Okay. All right. So once you had a chance to do that, let's uh, head back here. So uh, I'll start at the top of this file just so that it's a little bit easier for us. So we have HTML. Um, let's let's just start with that one. Okay, uh, I'll just go with the whole HTML file. And uh, I'm going to go back to my console here. And I'm going to say console.dir of my dollar sign zero. And let's see what we get. So I get this gigantic object back. In fact, I probably should have chose a different one because I'm so zoomed in. Um, but we can see there's a lot of properties on here, right? I'm going to try to go through uh, these pretty quickly and choose a better node in a second. But you can see that a lot of these uh, ARIA ones at the top are for accessibility. Okay, so we're getting a lot of accessibility information for this particular node. I know my face is in the way. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to scroll past all these, and make sure that the ones I'm discussing are above my face. <laughs> um, so here we have something like an attribute style map. All right, that's kind of interesting. Oh, there's nothing in there, so maybe not that interesting. Uh, we have attributes. Okay, so what's in here? Oh, okay, look at that. So we have things like the class. Right? We have all these data attributes, which we'll look at in future videos as well. We have the lang. So if I open up the class, um, maybe there's information about, yeah, we can see right here, right? Here is a class for the HTML, it looks like, right? So we, they have these different classes. So that's, that's pretty neat. Very, very useful for sure, right? We definitely would want to know the different attributes for our notes. Um, we have the, the URL or the URI in this case, um, child element count. That's, that seems useful, right? So that apparently there's only three child elements for this uh, HTML um, uh, parent element. We have the, what I was just mentioning earlier, right? We have child nodes. Now I'd like you to compare these two really quick actually. So this is really the purpose of going through this in depth. Here we have child nodes, which is a node list and it's size of eight. So check this out, right? Like check out how cool this is, right? We have a script, which we know is a regular element. We have a comment, a head, a comment, a text, a comment, a text, and a body. I could have probably cheated on the previous exercise and like found the text node um, like like this, for example, uh, just by actually uh, looking through <laughs> looking through the HTML. So I actually don't know how I can uh, reveal in the elements panel. Um, I guess do I have to switch back? Uh, it's, I don't know why that's not working. Reveal, reveal yourself. Okay, it's not working. Um, oh, Chrome. Uh, but generally, uh, here is a actual node list where we actually are seeing the nodes on this parent element, right? In this case, a parent element is the entire HTML page. And notice again, the most important thing here, and this is the purpose of actually learning these node types, is not all of these are just regular HTML elements, right? We have comments, we have text. Um, and those are treated differently than an HTML element. They don't have the same properties on them. Okay, so that's pretty useful. We can see that there is a body as well, and it has a whole bunch of classes on it. So that's very useful. Now compare this, compare this to the children, right? This is an HTML collection. See that? So hopefully now it's starting to make a little bit more sense and start to click, right? Like when we are comparing a regular generic node list and when we're comparing HTML elements specifically. So it looks like children is just the HTML elements. Node list is all of the nodes, including things like comments and text and all that kind of fun stuff, right? So um, which to use really depends on what we're trying to solve and what problem and question that we're asking. But we have access to both, which is perfect. 
Okay. Um, we have a class list. All right, look at that. Um, we have a list of all the different uh, classes uh, in here for the, um, where is it? Uh, I guess, where, where's our, um, uh, for for the HTML tag. So if we if we scroll back here, I think you kind of saw that, right? Like, look at all these classes. Look at that. Look at that list. It's gigantic, right? And we have access to all of them. And the nice thing is, we don't like look at this list. Look how beautiful that is, right? We we have literally a list, right, with indexes where we can grab all these like it's just any other array. Um, or an array like is what it's called, right? So we have access to all of these different um, classes nicely as we'd expect in a JavaScript object, which is pretty beautiful. Um, we have a class name, which we'll look at. We have different sizing properties. We have all this kind of stuff in here. First child, first element child, right? Um, in this case, they're the same thing. And we're gonna get more practice with this as we do things like navigating the DOM um, and how, how we actually query the DOM and things like that. But these are really, really important uh, concepts for us to actually get into. And it's nice because we're actually getting exposed to them right now through this exercise. We have ID, right? We have inner HTML and inner text, which we're actually gonna look at um, as well. Uh, we have all this information about the different children, siblings, uh, information about the uh, window sizing here, a bunch of events. I'm gonna scroll through all those which we'll get to in a video as well. We have the document object itself, the parent node, which in this case is the document because it's the HTML tag. Uh, we have this thing called parts, uh, which we might look at in future videos uh, for things like web components. Um, we have uh, siblings, role, scroll height, so how far we are down the page, or in this case, how far you can scroll. Um, spell check, we have styling information, like look at all this styling information there, that's pretty beautiful. I don't even know what most of these CSS properties even are, I probably have used only like two of them before. <laughs> um, but uh, those are all in there, which is pretty great. Uh, and then we have some of the stuff that we looked at before, right? So um, I know that that was kind of like a quick rundown, but also uh, hopefully not too boring, but kind of interesting in the sense that there's a lot of different stuff in here right? A ridiculous amount of information on these nodes. And each of these has extra information on it, depending on what actual uh, type it is. So we can further nest through these, right? And in this case, this was the HTML element, but this is going to be true of pretty much any element inside of here, right? So if I, if I scroll down in here, I look into the body. And for example, I pick, let me scroll a bit further down. I don't know, I'm just going to pick a random a tag, for example, right? Like a, a random a tag. And I'm going to do the same thing, right? and do a console dir of that, right? We're gonna grab an a tag, and we can see all these properties for that a tag, and most of these are pretty much the same because this is also just an HTML elements type. There's some differences, uh, but a lot of the stuff is the same because they inherit from the same prototype chain. All right, um, perfect. So I hope that that was an interesting exercise for you. I'd love to kind of hear in, in the comments, like uh, what, what are some really cool ones that you might've seen that I, I probably didn't have time to go through in this video uh, and that you found really interesting, specific properties, specific values. Um, what did you, which kind of blew your mind? Those are always super fun to actually look at and talk about together. Okay, um, so yeah, so we looked at a, a couple of these together. Hopefully that was a fun exercise. Now this next exercise is uh, both uh, not too difficult, but also can get quite tricky and intimidating. So um, I'd like you to uh, kind of walk through it with me quite slowly before we actually jump to, uh, right into it. So for the third exercise, I want you to actually find out what all of the different node types are. In the previous video, we saw only, I think it was like six or seven of them, but there is actually a few more. I'd like you to actually read the descriptions for each of them on the documentation. But I want you to ask the question, why can we ignore some of these in HTML? Like, why do we skip over a bunch of them? Um, which are the ones that are really no longer in use, kind of like marked as legacy? Um, and to do this, I'd encourage you to use both Google and the MDN developer documentation. Um, and if you want to get really uh, kind of crazy, um, MDN actually has a link um, towards the bottom for pretty much everything that we're looking at, whether it's JavaScript or the DOM, for the actual specification. And um, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea to read through specifications, uh, but this one is not too bad in particular. If you actually get a chance to look through the node types on MDN, I highly encourage you to look at the link for the DOM specification towards the bottom of that page so you can actually look at what's called the interface definition language for it um, and not focus on the code, but just see uh, and get exposure to what these specifications look like and get a bit more comfortable and less scared of actually this idea of looking at the specification. 
All right, so give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna pull up Google here and I'm gonna say um, HTML node types. Technically it's not HTML uh, node types, but uh, let's just go with that for now. Um, node.node types, There's that, that was technically kind of wrong on my part because we know it's not only HTML node types, but looks like I got the MDN documentation for node.node type. So let's, let's read through this together really quick. So it's a read-only node type property of a node. It's an integer, so it's a number that identifies what type of node it is, right? So we, we saw that. It distinguishes different kinds of nodes from each other, such as elements, text, and comments. Great, that's what we learned, right? Pretty cool. So let's take a look at what they have listed here in MDN. Um, so the possible values are, um, we have one, an elements node. So we saw a lot of these, right? So like the p tag, the divs, um, we have an attribute node. So we didn't really see too much of this, uh, but we'll see in, in kind of future videos maybe where it's an attribute for like an ID, for example. Specifically, that can actually be extracted as a node, which is kind of cool. Um, number three, this is a text node. So we saw this a couple of times uh, inside an element, which we actually saw, right? Inside a div, inside the body, inside an a tag, um, or even inside an attribute. There's this thing number four, which we didn't see, right? We never saw no type of four, the C data section, such as C data. Well, that's very helpful. What the heck is that, right? Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll maybe look it up in a sec. Um, then we have number seven, a curious uh, MDN. Why did you skip from four to seven? Huh? Okay. Well, let's see if we can uh, kind of solve that problem shortly. Um, this one's a processing instruction node. Wow. Okay. Uh, processing instruction of an XML document such as this. Okay. So it looks like some of these node types are not actually for HTML. That's what I was kind of mentioning earlier that I technically incorrectly searched for HTML nodes. Um, there's another type of template language called XML, uh, which is actually similar to what HTML is based on, um, but it's it's quite different. Um, and uh, it, it was used, it, it is still used for some things. Uh, it's kind of been overtaken by things like JSON, for example, for data transfer, um, but it, it, it's still there for legacy support. So when we're working with HTML, we're not actually gonna see this because it's not relevant to the HTML template language. It's only relevant to XML, so we can kind of ignore this one. Uh, we have a comment node, number eight. Um, so we've seen this one, right? This is uh, an HTML comment that looks exactly like this right here. So that's pretty cool. Number nine, document node. Well, we didn't really see that, uh, but um, we, we, I can I can kind of show you what that would look like. So if, if we come back to my uh, terminal here, I can do the document itself. Um, careful with the lowercase d here, dot node type. And you can see that this is a node type of nine, okay? Which is the actual document itself, which is um, the, the, the singular, DOM tree entrance for this entire web page. So if I switch back here, we can see that yes, that's a node type of nine. Okay. Um, and then we have a, a node type of 10, uh, which is a document type node. So this declaration, for example, and we did see that because we both coded it ourselves and we saw it on the Amazon page. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have a fragment node. We didn't see this. I hinted that we're actually going to see this uh, later, and we're actually going to make ample use of this because it's a really, really useful functionality. Um, but it's a bit hard to see because by definition, it actually is invisible. Um, so we're not actually going to see it in the DOM because it actually meant to disappear when it gets put in the DOM. Uh, but it is of number 11 and it is an HTML node. And we're going to be using it as kind of like a div to put other nodes into later. Now let's see what they have here. They have a small note saying the following constants have been deprecated and are not in use anymore. Entity reference node, number five. So there's our missing number five. Number six, entity node. Okay. And uh, number 12, uh, notation node. Now, not very much information on that. Maybe if we scroll down a little bit, give us some information how we can look at the node types of stuff. I encourage you to try these if you're interested. Um, and down here, as I mentioned, we have the specification, right? So if I open this in a new tab, Right, this uh, this specification. What we'll actually see is the spec open up, hopefully spinning, 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 um, and this will take us to the actual specification for a node. Um, so if we kind of scroll up a little bit from this, uh, what we'll actually see. Let me zoom in on this. Um, there we go. And uh, eventually, if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see this interface node. Okay, and now we are actually in the specification for what the DOM actually is for everyone, just like the actual specification itself, right? So this is the single source of truth that all the browser makers um, and everyone who wants to implement the DOM interface, for example, if you're writing a library for Python or for Java or Rust or something, you'd come in here and you would make sure that your code actually abides by this standard, which is super awesome. 
This IDL is an interface definition language. It's just meant to be a generic, uh, it's not actually a programming language. It's just meant to kind of explain uh, what you would expect to see these at a lower level. Okay, so right here, interestingly at the top, look at this, right? Look at that. That's super awesome, even these two, right? So let's read through this really quick because I find this fascinating. I think it's super important both from a uh, like feeling less impostery that, oh my gosh, the specification is a terrifying place. I don't want to look at that. I don't even want to open it, right? Um, let's go through this together so you can ease that fear, fear a little bit now, uh, because eventually the more that you start reading other code, looking at things like specification, the more comfortable you get with kind of the internal working of things and the, the more kind of informed you are with just what you are working with every day. These are the tools that we work with every day, right? So uh, we have an interface node which um, let me let me see if I can zoom in a tiny bit more here. Um, interface node and this inherits from that's what that's saying right here from the event target. So we actually saw that in the previous video, right? Event target is up top, and then we have node inheriting from that. So that's pretty cool, and we can actually take a look at that if we want. But here we have uh, unsigned short, so it's just the size of kind of this number. We have an element node, and that's number one. Attribute node is two. Text node is three. C data section is four. Entity reference node is marked as legacy number five. Same with entity node. Number seven, processing instruction node. Comments, which we saw, are eight. Documents, nine. Document type is 10. Document fragment is 11. And notation node, which is 12, which we saw as legacy as well. We also have these two in here, right, which we, have, which we actually just worked with. We saw the node type, which is also just a number. Then we saw node name, which is this special DOM string thing, which is why some were kind of in specific formats and some were in other formats, right? So these are all things that are gonna be on that node object. And as long as the browser that we're using, the dev tools that we're using, um, or things like node, if it's implemented in node or Python library or whatever happens to be, implements this specification properly to a T, we can expect to see these things on those objects in whatever language that we're using, which is totally amazing. And hopefully now you can see the power of actually having a specification and a standard, right? If everybody agrees that this is what it means to be a node, it doesn't actually matter what language you use, as long as that language can talk this language right here and has access to all these different properties in its own specific language way. And that's what we looked at when we actually saw the introduction to the DOM as well. Now that is definitely pretty cool. Okay, um, I hope that you found that valuable and not too intimidating. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments kind of what you thought of these exercises. Uh, and if you had fun kind of going through the different dev tools, um, were they too easy? Were they too hard? Did you struggle to find any of these things? Um, if you did find this video valuable, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, what we're gonna do in the next video together is actually look at how we can start selecting things from the DOM without having to rely on the dev tools specifically, for example, that dollar sign zero. So to be really explicitly clear, that dollar sign zero is not available inside things like JavaScript, okay? Uh, it's only available to us in the web browser's dev tools. They actually create that object for us dynamically um, as we're clicking around in the UI. Now to access something similar to that, and even more powerful actually, we can actually use things like a query selector, which is actually gonna be the topic of the next video where we can select absolutely anything that we want from the DOM um, kind of at will, which is going to be totally amazing. I'm super excited to get to that video. I'll see you in that one. See you later.